Hello everyone, this is Tanya from Professor Tanya Speaks. And today, today's gonna to be a short video. I promise, I promise. We're gonna be talking about the thesis statement. And by the end of this video, you should be very clear about what it is, what it is not, and what it should do. So it's all about the thesis statement. Now, let me first start by saying that thesis statement that is so coveted in the academic world. It's really just a statement or a sentence that tells the reader or the listening audience your overall general idea for the speech or for the paper that you're writing. It's the sentence that summarizes your purpose, really. Whatever your purpose is, that thesis statement is going to be a summary of your purpose. Now, before I tell you what it is, I want you to think about this example. Suppose you were listening to me one day give a speech or you were reading this. Suppose you read or listened to this. When I was eight years old, I went to Disneyland for the first time. Not only did I go to Disneyland for the first time, but I went on a plane for the first time. I ate food I'd never eaten before. I went with my friend and her family and we're still friends after 45 years. You know my age now, okay, don't make a big deal of it. Um, we went, and when we went to Disney, we went on a space mountain ride and I all, I was wondering as we were on the ride, I kept wondering why there were so many signs that said things like, if you have heart failure, do not go on this ride. If you have a weak heart, do not take this ride. We didn't know what it meant. We went on the ride and we all came off crying because we were so nervous. That was one of the many days. But we did so many things. We went to Bush Garden. We went on um, the Lion Safari tour. My mother and her, my friend's mother once went off one day and said they'd be back in two hours. They came back in six hours with all the shopping bags in the world. Oh, that was just such a memorable trip. Now you notice at the end of all of that, I said, Oh, that was such a memorable trip. Now, when you're listening, when I told you to listen to me and you started listening, you probably were wondering what I was going to be talking about. You heard about Disney. You heard about first time on the plane. You heard about um, Space Mountain Ride. You heard about Bush Garden, but you didn't quite know where I was going. Now, if I had said, I will always remember the summer of 1975 because it was the most memorable time of my life. If I had said that at the beginning, you would have said, okay. And as I told you the different things, you'd be thinking, oh, that's what made it memorable. Oh, that was in 1975. Oh. That's why it was so memorable. Why? Because I had given you the thesis statement. And that's what your thesis statement does. It helps the listener and the reader to know where you are going. Because if they don't know, then they're a little bit confused or unclear. Because they don't know what they're listening for. So I hope this emphasized why you need to have a thesis statement. Now, let me tell you some things that you need to keep in mind when you're writing your thesis statement. One, it needs to be clear. I think it goes without saying, but I think it's still worth saying. It has to be clear. You read the sentence. And if when you read it, you're confused, we're gonna be confused also. And sometimes I read statements and I'm confused. So it has to be clear. And, you know, and you'll know it's clear when the subject is clear and how you feel about the subject is there and it's clear and it's clearly stated. 
So one, it has to be clear. The next thing is it is not a fact. A thesis statement is not a fact. For example, my boyfriend has three cats and four dogs. That's a fact. That's not a thesis statement. It is not a fact. It has to be an opinion, your opinion. So you could say, my boyfriend's cats and dogs are a health hazard. That is your opinion. And that's a thesis statement. So if you say my boyfriend has four cats, three dogs, and I believe they are a health hazard, that's your thesis statement. Why? Because you have given us your opinion. So that made it a thesis statement. So your thesis statement is not a fact. That's number two. And number three, it is your opinion. The next thing is your thesis statement is not a question. For example, when you watch this video and I spoke about my friend, if I had the friend whose relationship I almost lost, now suppose I had said, why is it that friendship is so hard to sustain? That's a question. That would not be a thesis statement. But if I said, friendships are hard to sustain because of our lack of communication skills, our lack of communication, of conflict resolution skills, and our lack of peace making skills. Now that is not a question, but it's the answer to the question, isn't it? So it's not a question, it's the answer to the question. So it's another thing, make sure it answers a question. Oh, and another thing is, as much as you can, make it parallel. No, that's not a requirement, but that is one of the things that we ask for. And if your instructor is grading you for style, and sophistication, that's when it's necessary. Make it parallel. So if I had said, um, friendships are hard to maintain because of poor communication skills, poor conflict resolution, resolution skills, and an unwillingness to make peace, that would not have made it parallel. So find a way to make your sentence parallel. And once it's parallel, that's a good thing. So I think I told you everything. It's a clear sentence. It has to be clear. It has to not be a fact, but it has to be an opinion that you can develop in your paragraph or in your speech. It should not be a question, but it should be the answer to a question. And if, it, and if you can, you should make it parallel and make sure that it has what we call a controlling idea, which is your opinion. But think of it as the controlling idea because it controls what you talk about in the essay or in the speech. Now, if you have all of those things, you should have a clear thesis statement. But if at the end of it, the reader or the listener cannot tell what the subject is and how you feel about the subject, as in your opinion or the controlling idea, then you need to go back to the drawing board, change it until it meets the requirements and make sure it's clear. Take, up, take out anything that's not necessary and make sure it is a clear sentence. This is one of the times that I suggest that you make it a simple sentence, not a compound or a complex sentence, because sometimes the meaning gets lost with complex sentences, especially if your punctuation isn't accurate. Now in another video, we'll talk about the four types of sentences, but right now, think of it as a simple sentence with a subject, a verb, 
and an object. And stick to that for now. For the other sentences in your paragraph or in your speech or in your essay, you can use complex sentences. But try to make this simple so that the meaning is not lost. So I hope this helped you today. And I hope that now you can write a better thesis statement. So until I see you in the next video, practice writing those thesis statements and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.